Hey everyone, this is Rahul with the Alternative Investors Hangout, and today we have a returning guest. He is brother John F. Thanks for coming on again, John. Hey, it's great to be back again, Rahul. Thanks. Okay. Last time since we talked, we see these huge stories coming out of Cyprus right now. Many people, they barely can pay their bills, especially businesses, and then there are a lot of individuals that can't make rent payments because of the capital controls. So is this going to happen all over Europe? And then if this happens all over Europe, is the United States next? Well, that's the $50 bazillion question nobody knows the answer to. And, uh, I mean, if you think about it, uh, the rumor I just heard was that they loaded up Five to ten billion dollars worth of euro notes and flew them into Cyprus or something like that. I mean, I don't know um, how much cash would it take to uh, turn these digital uh, blips of money that are in the banking system into pieces of paper. You know, we haven't we haven't been here in so long. No one really knows. So. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, will there be some kind of hyperinflation that spills out of Cyprus, or will people calm down and start to trust the banks again? It's just we're really entering new territory here, and it's all something the EU, and my guess is probably spurred on by the Federal Reserve, who can't really call for an end to endless money printing, so maybe they're doing it through a proxy of the EU. I just don't know. There's too many things to guess about. Yeah, it is a difficult situation. And I wanted to get into the comments that David Stockman said a few days ago. And he said that the United States is going to experience a, a bubble in the bond market. And then there are a lot of people saying, no, no, Krugman saying that won't happen. We're just going to have probably a nasty deflationary spiral, but they're going to print the money, so we're probably going to have low inflation. So are you in the lines of David Stockman? Have you heard any of his interviews or looked into this? I've followed David Stockman, and he's kind of, I don't know, I, I agree with some of what he says. Now, Paul Krugman, I mean, come on. I mean, you could probably fade anything that guy <laughs> says. I mean, that guy's never made a penny doing anything except mouthing some kind of political nonsense that he's paid to mouth. But as far as David Stockman, I'm not really sure what his position is. He, you know, he kind of seems to vacillate. If you could clarify for me exactly what Stockman's position is, I could comment on it. Well, he obviously worked for Reagan, and then he said that Bush's economic policies got us into this mess. But I think he's a high tax guy, but he's a Republican. I don't know anything about that. But he also was saying that. In 2008, it was the wrong idea to, number one, have this economic stimulus with TARP, with quantitative easing, one, two, three. And then now he's calling for, A, people should get out of the stock market, and then B, we're just going to have the next bubble, and that's going to be obviously in the stock market, and then B, it's going to go into the bond market. Well, people should definitely get out of the stock market, but I don't think people are in the stock market. I mean, I've covered it before. Uh, the CAFR and uh, the government trading with itself, I don't think anyone's in the stock Maybe a lot of 401ks are still long. People are long the stock market. I don't know. They'd have to be insane to be long this gigantic rig casino. But uh, I don't know how you pump up a bond bubble from here. I mean, my goodness, short-term rates are practically zero, mid-term rates are nearly zero, and long-term rates are 2%. So how much higher can you push bonds up? I mean, I guess you can just have a Japanese-style, you know, lost three decades or something, but uh, I, I, don't, I think the world's a lot more fragile than that. I, I just don't think they can do that. Yeah, speaking of Japan, I think the 10-year hit, I think, 56 basis points which is insane, which Mike Norman keeps on saying that's the Keynesian miracle, but I want to change gears on that now. And I wanted to get into different topics that we usually don't cover, and it's regarding your critics. I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube starting to bash you. I mean, they've been around for quite a while, but 
just seems a lot more lately. And many of these guys, what they're saying is that in 2011, you were calling for triple-digit silver, and we haven't seen that right now. We haven't seen the nasty inflation Schiff has been talking about and a lot of my listeners thought, and myself including. I thought we would get nasty inflation. We haven't seen it. So what do you say to your critics that say that, you know what, you are saying $100 silver, we don't have it yet. Many people are saying it may not be the hyperinflation, it may not be the deflation, it may be something in the middle for quite some time. Well, I did make a $100 silver call if they announced QE3, and uh, that didn't happen in the time frame I was looking for the announcement to happen. And once the announcement finally did happen, we didn't get the rally I was expecting. Uh, there's nothing more to admit on that except I just made a bad call. Now, I, I don't think any of the fundamentals have changed for silver. I think that the cabal is, has become increasingly more desperate. We've seen it, in January of this year, uh, we've seen bottlenecks, delays. We've seen the U.S. Mint shutting down. We've seen the Canadian Mint shutting down. Um, you know, uh, never in the history of any market in the history of the world have you seen prices falling without supply coming online. Because, of course, the reason that prices fall is because there's too much supply. That's simple supply and demand. That's not the case in the silver market. The, the price of silver is clearly manipulated. It's manipulated, first of all, by the Federal Reserve and then the other central banks. Uh, there simply isn't enough silver in the world uh, for even uh, every person to have a half an ounce. And, uh, there, you know, it's, uh, the fundamentals are absolutely insane. They know that. The Federal Reserve knows that. All the central bankers know that. All the bankers who've been manipulating the price of silver, and that's a string of bankers uh, from Solomon to Bear to J.P. Morgan to Citigroup, uh, they're all involved in manipulating the price of this precious metal. And uh, all you have to do is look at something like Cyprus, which just blew up. Now, uh, I was saying to my wife uh, today, can you imagine if you lived in Cyprus right now and had been following what we believe for the last you know, couple of years – well, you wouldn't be very worried. Uh, you would have most of your wealth in precious metals that you control. Uh, you'd have some cash uh, set aside. Uh, you'd have maybe a couple bitcoins and a, a lot of food, and uh, you wouldn't be worried. People laugh at the Cypriots like that couldn't happen to them. Well, that can happen to you tomorrow night. Yeah, that could actually happen within the next few months if – you see bank runs happen in Europe. But I want to go back to an early, earlier point, and that is what would happen then to individuals that they cannot make rent payments? Because if they introduce capital controls, how would the system go on then? Because if you cannot pay more than $300 a day or if you can't write checks for a certain amount of time, I mean trying to pay property tax, trying to pay – medical bills, trying to pay off your credit card. What would you think would start to happen then? I mean, would creditors start going after us? It's just a weird scenario. Well, I, you know, I've talked about this in the past. I don't recommend that people uh, keep a lot of debt, but I certainly keep uh, more debt than I have cash. And uh, if you stop my ability to pay my bills, <laughs> you're not getting paid. So... Uh, I don't really care. Let them shut down the system. Uh, let everybody sit in their house. You know, where do you, you're going to take two years to get me out. So, uh, I guess it's going to be a standoff. But uh, if they shut down the payment system, then it's pretty obvious that no one's getting paid. And if they want these debts to be paid, they're not going to shut down the payment system. They want. That's in essence them saying. Okay, we're having a uh, debt jubilee. We're wiping out all the debts. Okay, that's fine by me. Wipe them all out. Let's start over. Okay, I wanted to change gears right now and get into Bitcoins. You've been criticized a lot about Bitcoins. Initially, when it crashed, people are saying, oh, Brother John F. is 
pumping and dumping bitcoins. There were some individuals making videos about that. And then all of a sudden it went from below teen level to $90 right now, something like that, close to $100. Max Kaiser has been talking about this. But then there are some other guys, guys that I follow, you follow, SGT and Chris Duane. They don't seem to be big fans of it. And you've been on this Bitcoin saga for quite some time. Max Kaiser has been well or has been as well. So is this Bitcoin a scam or is it just something that will continue to be an alternative investment because of what's going on in the banking system all over the world? Well, I ha- I haven't seen anything that the critics have come up with that aren't two-year-old stale arguments that don't hold any weight. I mean, uh, I- I'm not even going to go into the money laundering and the drug stuff and all that nonsense. Uh, none of that can be true, of course, we know because the market cap of the Bitcoin is too low for any of that to occur. But the initial criticisms were that uh, – and by the way, we had Bill Still come out against it yesterday, which was completely disingenuous attack, which I've uh, attacked in a video recently. But I mean the first criticism was, well, it's a Ponzi scheme. Well, no, it's not a Ponzi scheme because a Ponzi scheme is an investment uh, – scam where you're promising returns, uh, continuous returns that can't be delivered. There really is no investment. You're just paying off the early investors with later investors' money. The thing has to blow up because there's not an infinity of investors, and eventually it does. The person's arrested, and the whole thing blows up. Well, this unfindable, this no one knows who he is, Satoshi Nakamoto, that supposedly started this thing. We don't really know who that is but uh, has disappeared, so there's, there's nobody in charge of this thing. And, of course, that's the nature of it because it's, uh, it's a decentralized peer-to-peer uh, virtual currency system. So the next real, I would say, semi-valid criticism would be that it's a pump-and-dump scheme. And uh, so that means that the original investors are pumping it up and they plan to dump it at some point in time. The reason why that criticism isn't valid is because the people who are the early adopters of this thing don't have any money. Uh, These are uh, computer geeks and nerds who are into uh, cryptography, and the thing they have are bitcoins. So what are they using to push the price of bitcoin up? That would have to be dollars coming onto Mt. Gox and various exchanges. These people don't have any dollars, so maybe there's somebody early on who is pumping it up with a lot of dollars – but uh, it's certainly not the, the creators of this thing, and uh, I, I think I put maybe $500 into it at the beginning when it was down around two or something. I don't really have any money in it, so it's not me that's pumping it up. I, maybe it's Max Kaiser pumping a bunch of money into it, but uh, every criticism I've ever encountered, uh, there, there's just an easy argument against it. So if there's an argument against the Bitcoin, I'd like to hear it. I haven't heard it yet. Yeah, a lot of people or one person told me that if Max Kaiser behind is behind this, he's been touting it on the Alex Jones show, it must be a pump and dump because some of these guys don't believe in that buy silver crash J.P. Morgan campaign. And then the other guys that seem to diss it are guys like Carl Denninger, Bill Still, and then Don Harold, those guys who believe in what Still talks about with I don't know what exactly he talks about. It's not gold and silver as money, but having Congress, not Congress, yeah, Congress issue the money. So I'm not quite sure on this Bitcoin topic, but do you see this price going eventually higher to maybe 10000 100000 I mean, that's what Kaiser's talking about. I think that's insane. But if we do have a banking collapse, I think the sky's the limit. I just have no investment in Bitcoins as a disclosure, though. Well, it, it's uh, refreshing to have somebody who has an open mind about it. Um, uh, you know, some of the people you name, Carl Denninger, this guy is a perpetual deflationist. This guy would have had you in cash for the last 10 years straight. So, you know, that's uh, he's been thoroughly discredited. Uh, Bill Still, uh, he's some kind of greenbacker. Uh, the guy's a Quaker, and he believes in, I don't know, some kind of crazy socialism. So. He's uh, 
uh, wormed his w- – Doesn't he call himself a libertarian, Well, though? he's wormed his way into libertarian circles, but he's the furthest thing from libertarian because libertarians believe in free markets. This guy doesn't believe in free markets. Uh, so is he an M- MMT guy? That's what someone told me. I haven't looked into him. No, what, what's MMT? What Mike Norman pouts? You know that guy, the guy who hates Peter Schiff? I, I, I still don't know what that is. Oh, Mike Norman. Oh, I think it's like Money Modern. I forget what it stands for, but it's like some Keynesian crackpot ideology. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, still clearly a Keynesian. There's no question about it. He trusts the government to uh, regulate the currency, and uh, I'd be afraid to see what this Congress would do with control of the currency. I'd trust Ben Bernanke before I'd trust uh, Nancy Pelosi and Barney Fife or whatever that guy's name is. I mean, that's Frank. that's that's just crazy. But uh, uh, you know, I don't I don't think Max Kaiser is is behind the Bitcoin. I I, I think the Bitcoin is actually um, a revolutionary, world changing thing. Uh, the Bitcoin might not work out. It might be cracked. It might be broken. It might be forked. There's a lot of things that can happen. But the idea of a peer-to-peer, uh, decentralized cryptocurrency, that idea is not going to go away. And uh, I have watched the price of Bitcoin during these crises, and uh, it, it seems to be everything that it has uh, been described as. And again, I'll, I'll repeat this many times. I have not seen one valid criticism uh, that can stand the light of day, and neither has the market. And I do predict, uh, you said, you know, where's the price going? Well, I'm pretty sure by watching the chart and by watching the uh, formations that the chart's making, we're clearly going to go through 100. I don't know where we're going from there. I predicted that the Bitcoin would go to 100 and then crash to 50. I think I may have been wrong on that. I think it may go much, much higher. Ultimately, I don't know. If you took a trillion dollars out of this paper Ponzi scheme and uh, allocated all that just to the Bitcoin, uh, that's a lot of money. But then again, there's how many uh, in derivatives, maybe a quadrillion. I don't know. But if you allocated uh, a trillion to the market cap of of the Bitcoin, then you get $100,000 per Bitcoin. Yeah, that would be insane, which Kaiser's talking about. I didn't want to end on one thing regarding Bill Still. I mean, just imagine Barney Frank, or not Barney Frank, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, Barack Obama in charge of monetary policy, or not monetary policy, but in charge of our currency. That would be insane, or Paul Krugman. I mean, that's... Well, well, it might it might actually be a good thing. I mean, uh, just let these guys uh, take it where it's going to go. They'd probably do it really fast. Um, they'd come up with a bunch of bridges to nowhere, a bunch of trains that don't go anywhere, and uh, we'd be digging a bunch of holes and filling them in, and uh, the hyperinflation would happen really fast. Yeah, I mean, you could get your weak dollar, and then you could export your way to prosperity, as Krugman's talking about. Yeah, we could all uh, collect welfare, and nobody would work, and we'd all be rich. Indeed, and before I let you go, Brother John, uh, how can people follow your work again? Uh, they can get to my silver channel. It's brotherjohnf.com or brotherjohnf on YouTube. They can get to the Bitcoin blog. It's the bitcoinchannel.com or Bitcoin channel on YouTube. All right. Thanks for coming on again, Brother John. Thanks again, Roel.